something is wrong. So this is the end result of the rod that I created in order to make the new arms for the Delta bot. And so the important part of a Delta printer, one of the important parts of a Delta printer, other than pillar, um, being, pillars being square to the um, print bed, as well as the angles between the pillars being 120 degrees, is having all of the Delta arm lengths identical. So by making this jig so that the uh, the eyelets slip over top of the pins I can glue in the rods so that they are um, of uniform length. So what that means then is that I'm gonna have to well I the only the chances for variation are any lack of concentricity between this hole and the mounting around the outside, which is one of the problems with the other ones. So in order to um, try and eliminate that, I'm going to index these with a little um, with paint or something like that so that they um, I install them in the same uh, orientation that they were uh, glued into the fixture with, and then the uh, then there's going to be the variation that um, results from. Uh, so there's a very very slight bit of play there, but on the order of you know a, a thousandth of an inch, and then whatever expansion and contraction happens in this member relative to changes to ambient temperature. So if I do them all at the same similar time, that won't be an issue. And it's probably too small an error to even be noticed in the in the printer anyways, because that'll be um, swamped by other errors. So yeah, now it's just a matter of um, uh, mixing up some epoxy, putting them on here, letting the epoxy set, and then pulling them off and then letting the epoxy cure. So there's the first one, just need to let it set. So with this rod, I needed to file it down just slightly so that when I put the end pieces on, it would actually um, fit over the yokes. So that just gives you an, a, a sense of how um, non-uniform these rods can actually be. And non-uniform in shape, the exterior dimension of these yokes can be. So test fit before you put it on, and then you don't have to worry about pulling it off while the glue is still wet. So in addition to replacing the um, diagonal rods, I am replacing these bearings, which ran in these tracks. Well, the I don't know if you can see that well. In um, 8020, where this is actually 2020, um, there is a, um, a slot that you slip screws in or bolts in, nuts in, that you can um, attach bolts to. So um, these sort of just clipped onto the outside here, and then they ran up and down in those tracks. Now, um, over time, since these are just um, some sort of a nylon, they'll wear, and there is a fair amount of play in them. There's room for improvement there, and on the idea that I could use something like a linear travel bearing, which um, looks like that, and so you've got basically a continuous um, collection of balls that runs through a race in there, uh, and it um, makes for a much smoother uh, travel, and there's very little play um, horizontally 
and there's very little play um, vertically, and then there's very little torsional um, play as well. So that just is an improved bearing material for this uh, for for making a printer from. So I'm going to replace these with this as well as um, uh, replacing the rods. And now the big problem though is these are for three millimeter fasteners, but this is for four millimeter fastener. So what I need to do, since I don't have any um, T nuts that slip into here, I have to manufacture some nuts for three mil uh, bolts. I mean, is a lot of hacksawing and tapping and some milling. Okay, so I got a piece of stock marked up. Just gonna punch some holes and do some tapping and then I can um, fitting into the uh, track later. Okay, what we've got is the printer taken apart, more or less. I still have to take these limit switches off and then I've made uh, some inserts for attaching the new linear bearings. Okay, so we ran through the calibration and set the Z offset. Um, and let's see what a calibration print looks like. The first layer does not look very good. Something is wrong. So it's a little hard to see in there, but inside of that corner there is, um, I don't know what exactly you call it when an injection molding Oh, that's a better lighting. Where in the corner of the injection molding, you've got a little bit of um, residual um, material that prevents it from being a flush face. So you can just barely see it protruding a bit into the corner there. And it's, it's causing some slight... Um, irregularities. So I'm just going to carve a bit of that out um, and then uh, reclamp everything and put it back together soon. Hopefully I'll get something that's a little more uh, accurately squared. Still not a perfect fit, but it seems to be much better. Got that clamped up and cinching them down nice and tight. We'll see how that improves things. All right, now it has been rebuilt. So I have neatened up the corners so that they, uh, they fit nicer. Uh, I have reflashed the firmware. Uh, well, rebuilt Marlin from scratch with the new 1.1.9 um, software. Um, I have yet to square... Right, right now I'm still using the, the springs underneath these uh, bed, mounting, bed mountings, but I'm going to replace that with some shims and square up to the towers by using shims because, I mean... As you're scraping stuff off, I mean, these are just going to wiggle loose, and then if you can actually sink the, cinch them down um, to something that's more uh, solid, then you'll have less worries overall. Yes? What can I help you with, Sadie? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Th that's the next step, and then it is into calibration mode again. Uh, you know... People who buy cheap 3D printers had better like the idea of trying to um, effect calibrations on equipment because that's really what you spend most of your time doing, not really printing. So to calibrate the steppers, we clamp a caliper underneath the one underneath the um, the carriage and. Starting at zero, then we give it, uh, read the value on the stepper, and then let it descend, read the value at the bottom, and then that will give us what the actual travel was. Uh, 
and then now we can read this, the calipers. Well, that's finally, finally, finally looking better. So, <clears throat> what have I learned? Um, the auto bed leveling stores values in EEPROM, but you have to load those values from EEPROM or else the printer won't use them. Um, storing the Z height in EEPROM, um, the Z offset will, um, will store it in EEPROM, but you have to reload it from EEPROM. So uh, every time you do an M500 uh, to store a value in EEPROM, you have to do an M501 to recall it, and then that will make the, uh, the value usable. Um, but yeah, um, I'm getting pretty, uh, pretty nice standard deviations on the uh, G500 or the G33 auto bed leveling. So we're down into the, you know, t uh, 0 0.01 or less. Sometimes I'm in 0 0.008 in terms of standard deviation. So that is looking much, much better than it has in a long time. So. Summary, um, putting new bearings uh, for the verticals here. Um, rods rebuilt the right length, replaced the thermistor in the print head because that was giving me problems. And then took springs out from underneath the bed so that, and used um, shims uh, that are going to um, make the bed rigid. Um, so that it, uh, when I scrape it, it doesn't, uh, I don't disturb springs and, and change the, uh, the bed leveling. So yeah, um, let's try and use that as a printer now rather than spending all of our hours doing nothing but um, calibration. So why do people um, 3D print? Well, people who like to do a lot of measuring take up 3D printing, I guess. And have fun calibrating things. I don't know. Anyways, that's the summary there. It's better. I wouldn't exactly call it great. Um, but it's certainly much better than it has been in a long while. So, um, yeah, those layers look pretty uniform. I don't think the top surface is all that great, but the, uh, the bottom layer <clears throat> looks pretty pretty acceptable. You know, there's still a little bit of overshoot here and there, but compared to what it used to be like just a little bit a couple of days ago, I think I made some progress. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye for now.